coming up on this episode of DL Weekly. Lots of major updates out of the D23 Expo, including a new parade coming to Disneyland, updates on Marvel Land, and some Star Wars information. And Tag and Teresa are in the parks! Stay with us, DL Weekly starts now. Welcome to DL Weekly, a podcast about Walt's original Magic Kingdom, Disneyland. We cover the latest news and information from the resort, test our skills at trivia, and have a discussion about the parks every week. We invite you to send in your feedback and stories. Our contact information can be found at dlweekly.net. Now sit back, keep your hands and arms inside the podcast, and enjoy this week's show. Welcome to this episode of DL Weekly for the week of August 28th, 2019. I'm producer James. Take and Teresa are in the parks right now, so I'm holding down the fort for this week, but we will hear from them a little bit later. We'd like to send a big shout out and thank you to all of our patrons for supporting the show. The support helps make DL Weekly possible. Our patrons get some pretty nice perks like access to our Discord chat, live shows, and some DL Weekly slag and more. If you'd like to learn more about it, head on over to dlweekly.net slash support. And Tag and Teresa are off on this awesome trip in Disneyland right now. How did they book such a great trip? They contacted James over at Concierge, and they took care of the entire vacation from beginning to end. Dining reservations, hotel rooms, park tickets, and more. And as an added bonus, you get a free year of touring plans. So why wait? Check them out at concierge.com. Now let's get to the news. What a crazy weekend of news it was at D23. So much insight into the Disney properties on land, water, and over the air. We'll focus on everything Disneyland Resort related this week, but you can sure find more information about everything else from the links in our show notes. Kicking things off, a new parade will be making its way down Main Street, USA next spring. The parade is called Magic Happens. Concept art showcases some great-looking floats, including Sleeping Beauty and more recent Disney additions like Moana and Coco. Disney is hoping this will remind us all we don't need wings to fly, shooting stars were made to wish upon, and magic doesn't stop at midnight. Wow, am I excited for this. You know, historically at D23, Disneyland doesn't necessarily get too much of the spotlight compared to Disney World, but a new parade is huge news, and the concept art looks great, and I'm particularly excited for things like Moana and Coco, things that are really magical and really resonating with young and new Disney audiences that they will be excited to see people like Miguel and Moana on the floats going. I do have to say, though, I'm not as excited about the theme music that they unveiled. It has a really nice retro beat. It should keep up some energy, but my parade reference goes to Paint the Night, and that song just hooked me all the way through. When Can I See You Again keeps me going and makes me want to keep listening. Now, I know that was outside production from Owl City from Wreck-It Ralph, but still, I think that's something to kind of live up to. That being said, keeping an open mind because I'm really excited for the properties that they're going to include and a new parade is going to be awesome. We also got a big update on the upcoming Marvel Land, including an official name. Sometime next year, guests will travel to the Avengers Campus. The Land Inside California Adventure will include Disney's first Spider-Man-themed attraction, which will give guests a taste of what it's like to have superpowers as they sling webs to help Spider-Man collect spider-bots that have run amok. There will be a new restaurant based on pin particles from the Ant-Man movies, and of course, character meet-and-greets, including the debut of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Like Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, this will open in phases, with the second phase cornerstone being a new e-ticket ride inside the iconic Avengers headquarters. Guests will fly alongside the Avengers in an epic adventure to Wakanda and beyond. Details are a little light on phase two, but I gotta say that's super exciting to be able to go into that headquarters and another e-ticket ride coming to the park. How awesome is that? I'm eager to hear more about it. And I'm also eager to see what this Spider-Man attraction is like. Now, I know I've t- ridden the Spider-Man ride at Universal's Island of Adventure in Florida, and I think that attraction is really well done. And so if this one can kind of mimic that, of that experience of being immersed in a spider fight and web slinging, like actually interactive, is going to be so cool. The superhero fan in me is really pumped to be able to ride alongside Spider-Man. We're still more than two years away from Mickey's Runaway Rail at Disneyland, but we were treated to another look at what to expect from the attraction. 
As you may know, the attraction will be in Toontown at the El Capitoon Theater, where Mickey and Minnie are premiering their newest short, Perfect Picnic. You'll travel through Mickey Shorts on a zany adventure. And before you enter the cinema, you'll experience a special exhibit created by the Toontown Hysterical Society featuring costumes and props from the Toon world. We also got a glimpse at the cast member outfits, and I'm digging the nod to the Chinese theater while keeping the train engineer feeling. Two years feels so far out for this attraction in Toontown that is so in need of something to really draw people in. So I am getting antsy for this to happen, and I really hope it can live up to these expectations and breathe some new life into that part of the park that, like I said, really needs it. D23 also showcased a new trailer for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and includes never-before-seen footage from the not-yet-opened Rise of the Resistance attraction. Some of the effects include a lightsaber cutting through the roof and blaster fire near the ride. Based on my observations, it looks similar to that Spider-Man attraction that I talked about earlier at Islands of Adventure where guests ride in a vehicle through exciting scenes, and it will likely include some mix of screens and actual effects. This cannot come soon enough for me, and I have not been to Galaxy's Edge yet. I'm already feeling the jealousy of being at home while Tag, Teresa, and company are all taking in Galaxy's Edge this week. What an experience that has to be, and how cool is it going to be when it's fully opened with both attractions and the whole part of the park developed. It's going to be great. I really like how this looks. It seems like it has a really good feel to Star Wars that's really going to immerse people in it, so if it's your thing, I think it's going to be worth the wait. Speaking of Galaxy's Edge and worth noting the timing of that new trailer, Galaxy's Edge opens this week at Walt Disney World Resort in Florida, and there's already talk of signs posting about uh, restaurants opening at 2.30 in the morning for guests to get the taste of it. So, wow, crazy. I don't think this means anything for Disneyland right now until the rest of the Star Wars land opens up, but cool to keep an eye on. And if you're like me and miles and miles away from the park and wanting a bit of that Star Wars experience, you can turn to some music streaming services. Disney added a playlist of six songs heard in Oga's Cantina called Oga's Cantina, Rex's Playlist Number 1. And with the number one included, perhaps we'll get some more later on to get a little bit more of a taste. So can't wait to tune into that later on. Now, I know we try not to editorialize too much on this podcast, but I can't help but share being a little bummed out as pointed out by a listener in our Discord, for the lack of news from D23 about any Tomorrowland refurbishment, it's been speculated on for months, and it's not the only thing that was allegedly missing from this convention. But still, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that something awesome will come to Tomorrowland in the next decade, because there's so much potential there for Disney to really bring the magic. Speaking of bringing the magic, Scrims are down at the Sunset Showcase Theater in Disney California Adventure, revealing an amazing El Capitan-style marquee right next to award wieners. The new digital marquee features classic neon lights and signage for the Sunset Showcase Theater. A digital screen will be changed to display whatever is on show in the theater. Scrims are still up as construction continues and what permits say will be a ticket booth to go with the theming. I think that's a cool update. The sign looks really nice, and I think it will really help kind of draw people to take a look at it. A friendly reminder that the Haunted Mansion is down until September 6th, while Haunted Mansion Holiday Overlay is put in place. Jack Skellington's invasion of the house goes through January 6th. Getting your hands on some Disney merch may be coming to a Target store near you. The retailer is launching 25 Disney shops this October with dozens more to follow in the next year. What a cool partnership between these two big organizations. The shops in a shop, as they're described as, we're going to have a whole bunch of pieces of merch. They may come from the park. They may just be Disney-related. I'm not exactly sure on this one, but we'll have to wait and see. I already saw that Target is pushing advertisements on this as an email has already come into my personal email saying, hey, we got Star Wars here and it's coming. So I'm eager to see what it looks like and uh, maybe give us a little bit taste for those of us who are a little further away from the parks. And it wouldn't be a DL Weekly episode without talking about some ears there's some new ears available at the Emporium featuring the Haunted Mansion. The front of the ears feature the Hitchhiking Ghost, the Caretaker Silas Crumb, and Master Gracie's Tombs. And in lieu of a bow, you have a whole row of singing busts. The ears are double-sided as well. One side has the Haunted Mansion logo topped with a raven, and the other ear has the Let Me Out corpse from the Endless Hallway scene with a skull next to it. Again, those are available at the Emporium. They look pretty nice. I'm actually impressed with how nicely the bus fit in place of a bow. I know Disney World is also getting some new Haunted Mansion ears as well that features a bow, so we'll see if those also swap places at some point. 
Well, now we reach the part of the show where I would usually show up for the first time. But instead, we're going to take a trip to the park first to hear for the first time from Take and Teresa and producer Vern. So now, um, this is the time of the show where we go with producer Vern, who is sitting here in the park, who has diligently been uh, scoping out trivia you while guys, we've been here. I'm terrified for trivia now because he has been going around to every little nook and cranny that he can find to find possibly the most obscure and crazy Disneyland trivia ever. He's had to take photos so in case we call him out on it, he can like show us the photo to prove it. So, so I'm really nervous. <laughs> since we're in the park, uh, we're uh, producer Vern will read us the question. We will try to answer. Then he will tell us the answer right away. Can I like go scope things out if it's a Main Street question? No. I'm just asking. <laughs> All right, so it's great to be here with you on Main Street in Disneyland. Uh, thank you so much for having me come along and for allowing yourselves to be subjected to what I'm about to put you through. <laughs> We're going to get slaughtered, I think. <laughs> I, I will throw you at least one low ball, I hope, maybe. So, uh, right here on Main Street, not too long after you first come into the park, you can go down a um, little pathway to the right, and you come across various shops, including the Painless Dentist, which is run by Dr. E.S. Bits DDS. He is licensed to use what dental procedure? I knew he was going to ask something in this alcove because it was when we were getting our locker today and he was diligently on his phone and I have no idea. Uh, oh, laughing gas. I'm seconding that. <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> I was thinking, yeah, 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 yeah. It just came to me. Were you really thinking that, or did you see my smile? <laughs> no, no. I thought laughing gas, and then I saw your expression. I was like, yeah. I'm right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then Teresa turned and saw the same expression. <laughs> All right, very good. <laughs> Dang. So we've got one of four at least so far. <laughs> yes. In that same section of the park just off of Main Street, in fact, directly across from painless dentist there is the hotel marceline they offer clean rooms and what cold showers i've cold seen showers. i've seen this sign but i cannot think of what it was it clean yeah. clean rooms and i have no idea Good rates. Oh. Good what? Good, good rates. rates. Oh. Good prices? Yep. All right. In an area that Tag loves so much, the entrance to Jungle Cruise and the corral area for all of the strollers, there is a large sign that says, please deposit all prams, buggies, strollers, and blank inside. What was that? Please deposit all prams, buggies, strollers, and blank inside. Cages? Carriages. No, it is perambulators. Is that, what is that even? Yeah, what is that? I don't know, and Please that's why define. it caught my eye. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing a perambulator yeah, is another word for a stroller or other. So do you, do you do you know what do you know what happened here, Teresa? We were we were we had our Disney glasses on and not paying attention. That's, that's what exactly happened. what happened. As we were with him. All day, you guys. We were with him and next to him all day. <laughs> yes, but we were too busy looking at everything but whatever he was looking exactly, at. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, the fourth one for today, and hopefully a much easier one for Let's you. Let's hope. Um, in the safety video for Indiana Jones, what is the name of the narrator? This is Sala speaking. Oh, I love Sala so much. Yes. Take heed. <laughs> Very good. It might yes, be it was Sala. In case, it, what what is it with the bumpy thing? Oh, uh, uh, using uh, uh, putting the seatbelts on because uh, when the ride may get a little mm, bumpy. Mm, bumpy. That's it. Mm, bumpy. So two out of four, not terrible. Not terrible. Not yeah. bad. Oi. Especially since I was kind of intentionally being mean. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, weren't those some great questions this week from producer Vern? If you've got some that you'd like to hear for us to use on uh, one of our next shows, you can send us an email. It's trivia at dlweekly.net. We love to include listener questions in our trivia segment. 
And now we will head back to TNT for this week's discussion topic. A little out of the norm as usual, as it, they have been recording a couple of times throughout their trip. So think of this more as a stream of thoughts and their commentary on some of the big news that's coming out from the D23 panel and their experience in the park. Enjoy! All right, well, this is uh, me and Teresa here reporting live from the D23 Expo, and yes. we, about, what, a couple hours ago, got out of the Legends ceremony. Yeah, we've, like, barely scratched the surface, you guys, of the Expo. It's crazy. So, first of all, yeah. this building is massive. Absolutely Definitely massive. massive. It like, you're in the Expo floor, you don't even realize that there are two other floors of things going on with different stages and whatever. <laughs> the only reason we knew that there was another floor is because we had to get to a stage <laughs> we, that was on the third floor. Yeah, we, we, I don't say, I don't want to say we got lost, but we just, oh, well, we were at this stage for this and wasn't at that one. So we're going to go over here because that's mm -hmm. where the other ones I think are. And then we realized, oh, no, there's also two other levels of right. stages. So crazy. So we're sitting out in the queue waiting to go into the costuming. Um, panel, which I'm very excited about. I'm also very excited. We haven't had a chance to go check out the archives exhibit yet. No. That has a bunch of the costumes displayed, but definitely plan to do so. Now, so a couple things I want to say about the expo in general. So, um, obviously, we talked last week about the the reservations were a little iffy. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that when we got here in the morning, we got here a little bit later. We didn't get here super early to sit yeah. in the hall, and we were like pretty far up. We, you could choose. We did the reservations yes. for Legends. And so with the reservation, you got to then choose if you wanted to be seated in Section A, B, or C, which we weren't really sure what that meant. Because there was a <laughs> tiny they, little yeah, map on the wall. It was a tiny map, so we didn't really see that. But we chose A just because. Mm -hmm. And, well, it was we were on the side, like left side of the stage. Um, which so, was fine. Yeah, it was a pretty good spot. The center was B, and then right side, I think, was C. So we were, But we were like the second row of the left yeah side of the stage so we weren't directly centered on but we could make out their faces without having to look at the big jumbotrons that was cool yeah. i also have to like tell everyone because i was like fangirled out um robert downey jr like entered the arena like what 10, 10 feet, in front, feet of us. in front of us yep and we saw him come out behind the curtain before anybody else did it seemed like so it was like crazy exciting now crazy be exciting. before legends i just want to say some expo things so first of all like you said we got here we got in line. It mm -hmm. seemed like there was some confusion because people were saying that we had, you know, people that had reservations wanted to know if they had to stay in the line. They were told yes. Then later they came through and actually ended up pulling out the stage yeah. past people. So there was some miscommunication. And the general consensus between everybody that we've talked to um, that are attendees is that a lot of the staff here seems to seem to be confused. Like there wasn't a lot of yeah. instruction. I, well, and we talked to one of the cast members that was downstairs yep. uh, in the queuing area for the Legends. And she said that... Um, this is kind of a temporary gig for her mm. and that they she didn't have any they didn't really have any training yeah. so they're kind of all just flying by the seat of their pants i think they're doing an awesome job oh though, yeah all things considering mm -hmm. there's just there's so, a mass of people so many people here so i don't know how you would it feels like all of disneyland is everything. here in one expo hall plus like, yeah plus yeah all of disneyland plus more now, it's just crazy the legend ceremony was pretty cool of course uh, there was 12 people inducted into the yes. legends mm -hmm. um to, to become Disney legends. Yep. Um, we were a little sad because the two people I was really excited about were actually not here. One of them was James Earl Jones. Uh, Hans Zimmer also did not make it. And neither did Bette Midler. Bette but Midler Bette, Bette Midler apparently was very she, upset because she got stuck by weather. Yep, she was trying. Apparently she was in the airport all day trying mm -hmm. to get a flight out. I don't know where she was flying I don't from know either. Since the, apparently wherever it is has terrible weather, so we don't want to go there. Right. But, um but yeah, so that was that was a little bit of a letdown. But her daughter actually accepted the award for her. And Very touching cow, too. Her daughter is this, her spitting, spitting image. image, like just crazy. Yeah, definitely. Um, highlight for me though is Bernadette Ritchie. Her oh, speech she, heartfelt. was so heartfelt, and like it just meant so so much for her. She mm -hmm. got emotional. I started to get teary eyed. Oh, just me too. So sweet. And again, um, for those of you that don't remember, she is the one, the creative genius behind. Fantastic. Yes. She also did. Um, she worked on the electrical parade. Yep. She did like the choreography, mm -hmm. I think, for the electrical parade. She so, did a lot more huge, than I thought huge, because huge they impact. went into her whole yeah, all spiel. Yeah, sorts of spectaculars mm -hmm. and just very. She was very, very humble and like yeah. was very, still very passionate about mm -hmm. about what she had done and just 
just is so thankful for her yeah. time with the Walt Disney Imagineering. Well, and it, she was she was genuinely touched that yes. she was nominated and and uh, mm-hmm. had gotten a, had become a legend. So if I could run into her during the expo, I would give her a hug and get oh, a yeah. picture with her because she just is awesome. Who was the other person that was like Christine Aguilera was really funny. She was also very she's touched. A huge, huge, huge Disney, fan. right? Huge Disney fan, and she well, like, she sung to she open it. Fan girled out because she she got her award after Bernadette Ritchie did. Oh, and so she sat next to Bernadette Ritchie, not knowing who she was. Oh. And then all of a sudden, like, yeah. uh, during her acceptance speech, fangirled out that she was sitting next to someone that created the Main Street Electrical Parade and created Fantasmic. She was just, right. was just in awe of that. So it was very cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it was really nice because a lot of the people talked about... Um, they talked about cast members and mm-hmm. that, that, that the company really is done through cast members. Um, they talked about the fact that... Um, uh, that you know, it's all about storytelling, and it's all about the little details. Multiple yes. people that were being indu- uh, inducted mentioned that, so that was pretty cool. Um, it was it was an over it was a great um, was cool. panel, I thought, very cool. um, a great ceremony, and it was cool to be in the same room as some of these people, of course, like Robert Downer Jr., um, John Favreau. John Favreau got some good cheers there for for almost everybody. Oh. The standout kind of funny guy was, um, what was the guy's name that was the Imagineer? Wing Chow. So Wing Chow is an Imagineer, and he's worked on, like, tons. Yeah, so many things. Parks, cruise lines, resorts, resorts, everything. So he was actually very funny, I thought. He was hilarious. Yeah, he was hilarious. And so for somebody who's not up and in front of crowds all the time, he did great, I thought. Mm -hmm. And he was also very emotional. He, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, gave it to his parents and stuff that Mm -hmm. was coming. And so... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, really, all of the people that were accepting this award just seemed very humbled and mm-hmm. just so grateful. I think Christina Aguilera even said that this was better than winning a Grammy. Yeah. Um, it was just, this is so, like is a much, much more important award to these people. So that was really cool because mm-hmm. I kind of thought, you know, a lot of these people, especially when they were kind of doing the little bios and they kind of introduced them, gave off a list of, oh, this person's won this many right. Emmys or Oscars or whatever. Grammys you know, or whatever. Grammys yep. or whatever. Or, um, Peabody's and what, sure. all sorts of different awards. So it was kind of like, okay, so where does a Legends award, a Disney Legend award kind of compare to all of this? Yeah. That? And it seemed to me that they all were, I don't know, it was the, it just the how sincere and how heartfelt oh, yes. their thank you speeches were and acceptance speeches were after it's, I've right. never seen, I've never watched an award ceremony no. that the speech was that deep and meaningful. So it was very cool. Well, uh, Bette Midler's daughter, who gave the speech, I thought that the she end got, part of her she speech... She got emotional. I mean, she was getting emotional. Well, it wasn't even her... Mm-hmm. You know, she was just accepting the award for her mom. That's how... I mean, so it means a lot to Bette, well, but the fact that it meant so much to her. Well, she read a speech that was written by her mom, and at the end, she talked about how she never felt like an artist, but now that she is a yeah. Disney legend, she feels like she can call herself an artist. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. Just, yeah. I mean, it's Bette Midler. Yeah. <laughs> it's Winifred Sanderson. Kenny Ortega was there. That was also pretty dang yeah, cool. Yeah, that was very cool. Um, of course, Robin Roberts and Diane Sawyer mm-hmm. from mm-hmm. ABC News. Um, I didn't know actually a lot of the stuff that they talked about. I didn't know a lot of their career history. Yeah, it was very interesting. So um, it was very good. I thought, uh, God, the crowd there was just massive. Mm-hmm. I would like to know how many people were in that auditorium a with lot. us. So the fact that we were like second row, yeah, we were off to the side, but the fact that we were second row, mm-hmm. like, I didn't have a good grasp on how many people were in there because there was they're all behind us, you know. So it just fu- seemed massive, and the, the, it was very dark, so you couldn't really see it right. across the hall. But it just seemed like a ton, a ton the, of people. The um, the funny tidbit that we should share with our listeners, uh, if they haven't already heard, was that Robert Downey Jr. got in trouble for smoking oh, weed on yes. the Skyway. Yes, that was good. <laughs> that was a great because they all did. I was I I was very happy about this. A lot of the um, awards. People, you know, the people, the recipients were um, sharing their Disney story. I thought that was so well, and they all awesome. said it's not as it's not as devious or whatever as Robert Downey. Yeah, because he was first, so they all had to follow his Disney story. <laughs> but yeah, he apparently got like kicked out of Disneyland. It was his first trip to Disneyland <laughs> for smoking pot. First, yeah, on the Skyway. <laughs> so uh, that's that's quite interesting. Yeah. So um, leave I, it to Robert Downey Jr. Now the rest of the expo, there's just so much. Oh it's very gosh. squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. We've literally only had time. We did the the ceremony in the morning. 
Uh, then uh, we went and did lunch, and that was kind of an interesting experience because we ended up in line for what, like an hour? Yeah, it was kind of uh, just a mess. Not the best executed, we'll just say yeah, that. Yeah, it was a mess. Uh, the sandwich was very good. It was good. It Large. was very good. Um, and I, I have to say that I think that the people we've met so far in line have been amazing. Very fun. We've made a lot of expo friends. We have, we have. And of course, we've met some of you guys mm-hmm. that are listening. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was really cool that you guys um, came up. And, well, it was funny because, Teresa, you were in the restroom, and I was just standing there minding my own business, and one of our listeners came up and goes, Tag, and points at me and runs <laughs> at me. And I'm like, I looked at her like, do I know you? Am I supposed to know you? Like, <laughs> Kind of caught you off guard. Yeah, well, I for a minute I thought she was somebody like that we knew, and then I felt bad because I was like... I don't know you, <laughs> but um, she was there with a friend, and yep. um, they're going to be at our meetup tomorrow too, mm-hmm, which will be super mm-hmm. exciting. Very so, fun. Um, now we got we didn't talk about this either. So we got in yesterday, and we were lucky enough to have a couple people. One of them, a former cast member, who was able to get us into Disneyland, um, and we got to enjoy the Haunted Mansion. We did. We got to ride the Haunted Mansion twice. The crowds were really light Very which was light. good well in the majority of the crowds that were so we got in the park at like 7 p.m i yep. want to say um the first thing we did was we went over to tropical hideaway to and get food tag and i ate because we hadn't eaten the like, bow buns were good i had a beef one yep we had bow buns i had the vegetable one delicious very and good of course dole we whip. had to get dole whips as well so we dole had whips dole were also whips. good we got to sit right next to rosita so she kept us yes. company during our meal mm-hmm. um after that we went over to indiana jones which was down which was, it had just gone down. Yep. So you guys, I missed getting stuck on Indiana Jones by like minutes. Minutes. Insane. So then we <laughs> went to Pirates, then which we was a walk on. Yeah, we walked right onto Pirates. Uh, great, as always. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, then we went to Haunted. Oh, mm-hmm. that was the first time we saw the Redhead. I oh, really yeah. enjoyed the Redhead scene. I, I thought did it, too. I thought it was very cohesive. It didn't feel out of place to me. It didn't mm-hmm. feel like it was something that they kind of like took out. I, it didn't feel like it was a brand new scene. Sure. They added a lot of chickens everywhere, there I noticed. There were chickens I all didn't, over. I never noticed that in any of the videos and stuff I've seen, but there's a lot of chickens. Lots of chickens, yeah. Um, so we got off that, and we went to the Haunted Mansion, we of did. course. And then, to top it off, so we got handed oh. the lovely little red cards where they're trying oh, to figure yes. out the um, wait time. The wait time. So Tay got handed one, and I got handed one. And our group walked through all of the turnstiles and walked through all the little lanes, mm-hmm. got up to the porch of the mansion. They told us, oh, just wait right there. You know, they let us into the foyer, and then they, they had us wait. They let you know the people get on the next elevator down, and mm-hmm. then they let us go into the foyer. And then all of a sudden, I ner- noticed that the um, cast member closed the front door to the foyer, which I've I've never noticed that before or experienced it. It was kind of one of those. Do they do they normally do that? I don't right. think they normally do that. And then he kind of poked his head in and said, "You know, we actually just had to close the ride." Um, so if you guys just want to hang out, it probably won't be like 10 to 15 minutes. So you guys, again, minutes. We missed being oh, broken down. On, on another you one. love I think, being broken I down. I think they got walked off because then we were standing in the foyer and, a, oh, and they an came elevator, out of the elevator people came back up and then mm-hmm. got off the elevator. So I, I, they may have gotten walked off. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did get to go on the Haunted Mansion after that. We just had a long pause in the graveyard scene. Tag and I were situated nicely right in front of the singing bus. So that was a good that place was nice. to be paused at. Mm-hmm. Um, and then continued on. We went to, we had our cantina reservation. We did. So we bopped into Galaxy's Edge. Um, which beautiful at night. It is very beautiful at night. And I will say it was a lot larger than I expected. Mm-hmm. Like I felt like it was massive. massive. And the, like the like mountains and like it may be forced perspective, but they did a fantastic. They look like they go on forever. Just, they looked like they were. It was a vast range of mountains. Mm-hmm. But they also just were like so so tall. Mm-hmm. But just very very cool. I just I love the lighting in there. Mm-hmm. That was great. It was great at night. Uh, I didn't have the problem that a lot of people have. I thought there was plenty of sound. There was all types yeah, of sound. There wasn't a lot of um, crowd Music. chatter though. Yeah. So I wonder if during the day when it's busier with Maybe. lots of crowds and talk I mean there were there were people yeah. in there don't get me wrong they just was I think it was a lot of people like us that were just like taking it all in so there right. wasn't a lot of crowd noise um, but we, yeah there was quite a few sounds we had a, a great um, interaction with a cast member my our reservation actually disappeared members. out of the app for some reason and uh, but she found it. She and did. and uh, there was five so, of us, yep, and it we was. We had a couple. A couple of listeners were hanging out. Yep. They were just going to hang out with us until we got in, and then they were going to um, continue on with mm-hmm. their night. They didn't really. I don't think they really had any intention of getting in. No. You know, they were cool, just hanging. And all of a sudden, that same cast member came back down the line. She said, 
basically something along the lines of, well, you know, you guys have been hanging out all day together. Da, 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 and then I wasn't quite sure where she was going with that. Right. She said, you know, I can, I'm just going to adjust the reservation for you. I mm-hmm. can get all five of you guys in. So yeah. That was amazing. That was amazing. Amazing. So that kudos to her. She's definitely getting a shout out at. Oh, we took a picture of her name yep, tag so we can give her a cast out. recommendation. Mm-hmm. Uh, we went into the cantina. Really cool. Loud. Like a bar. Yeah, but like it was a cantina like, would be. Yeah, like hopping loud. Yeah. Like, like hurts my ears loud. We got <laughs> seated with a couple other groups at one of the big tables, which yep, was awesome because we got to talk to them about the drinks and stuff that they had experienced. Um, our waitress was super amazing because I actually ordered um, one of the blue milk drinks. The, the Banta. Something like that. And I didn't think it was that great. But I loved Teresa's, which was the yep, Ronto. I got the something Java, right, or Java juice. juice. And the Java Delicious. juice was great. And so she said, I'll get you one of those. And she took away the other one and gave it and yeah. didn't charge us for it. Yeah. So that was amazing. So we also were going to cast a number compliment well, and her. And again, it wasn't that you were asking for a new no, drink. No, she just offered. She just said, so what do you think? And Tags was like, yeah, I, I'm not really that big of a fan. I mean, I don't hate it. It's not the worst thing. I don't right. hate it. I, I'll drink it. You know, yep. he wasn't trying to get a different drink. No. She said, you know what? Let me take care. Of it. And she just noticed that he said, her drink's great. Yeah. You know, mine's, a, it's okay. And she said, you know. I can exchange that for you, no problem. Yep. And Tag was kind of, you were a little taken aback. You had to pause. Well, like, I told her, like, she didn't have what? to. I was like, really? I was, yeah, like, like, I was like, you don't have to. And I couldn't she's like, believe no, that. That no was problem. amazing. Um, so we hung out there for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also had, there was like a thing in a Petri dish that was amazing. There was like a jello very, thing and it was very, very good. good. Um, we also got the, like, bites, the, like, Batu bites or yeah, something. Mm-hmm. And that was okay. They were interesting. It was kind of like, like playing Russian roulette with snacks. You weren't yeah. quite sure what you were going to get. Some of them were sweet, some of them were salty. There were some spicy ones. Spicy. All sorts of things. But enjoyed the cantina, I think, yeah. Mm-hmm, and then uh, we went and saw the Millennium Falcon, which was also amazing. We walked through by the Rise of the Resistance area, and we went back on the Haunted Mansion again. Yes, again. Uh, enjoyed that. We had to that. go through one last time, since it will be closed when we're there on Monday. Right. And then finally, we got to Indiana Jones, and we were able to go on that as our last attraction of the mm-hmm. evening, and it was wild. It was fun. It was. Um, we were joking. A little bumpier than normal. Yeah, we were joking. We were like, they just want these cast members want to go home, so they like sped it up a it little up. bit for mm-hmm. us to get us through faster. It was awesome. It was fun. Then we made the mistake of trying to browse the. We made the mistake of trying to browse the Emporium at the end of the night, which is not a good spot. Um, then we hung out for another few minutes, talking with the listeners we were with, and. Went back to our hotel, enjoyed our comfy beds. We were at the Howard Johnson Anaheim, which yeah, has been like amazing. Right across the street, super eight minute quick walk. Walk, mm-hmm. super quick. We are in the building one, which has the which has been renovated, and the rooms mm-hmm. are amazing. Beautiful. They are planning on renovating the building two. I think it is um, coming up this year. So make sure if you um, get a reservation at the Howard Johnson building one uh, is the one to get. And we have a balcony, which was mm-hmm. nice. We can see the Matterhorn we from can. our room. So this morning when we woke up, I went to the window. I said, "Good morning." Matterhorn and uh, Tag laughed at me, but that's okay. <laughs> no, I laughed. I laughed because uh, how awesome it was, and it's been a dream of mine to actually stay at the Howard Johnson for a long, long time. And so, again, James from Concierge was able to get that because we actually didn't think we were going to be able to book that one. Yeah, so, so James actually cool. contacted them and booked that first. So that was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so far, it's been an amazing experience. We're very it tired, has. but it's it's an amazing experience. Well, hello, everyone. We are joining you live from the Esplanade at Disneyland. How exciting, Teresa? Of course I'm excited. It's Disneyland. Plus, we just got done with three amazing days at D23. Going to be very honest with you guys. It was our first expo, as you guys all know. It was so much fun, but it was it was also overwhelming. But very overwhelming. By, like... The half, like, by Saturday afternoon, we felt like we were pros. We knew where everything was. We understood the layout. Everything was great. It was a little, it was a little, I think, I think our mistake with it being our first expo, as much as amazing as it was to have gone to Legends, that kind of made everything, I think, more overwhelming because yeah. the first thing we did was with, like, six or 7,000 of our closest friends, and then we had to all rush into the expo floor all at the same time, so it just felt yeah, like so just the f- so many people. Our first experience of the expo floor was cattle. Yeah. All just, being just, yeah, run herds through. Herds of people. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got, there's so many things to look at from all of the different booths. The costumes are amazing. Mm-hmm. I would... I had to keep reminding myself that I couldn't just like stop and look at someone's cosplay. I had to keep like, Oh yeah. Cause it was just, it was so tempting cause they're so, so good. So one thing I want to say, um, that I think is really important for me was, um, apparently this year was better than the previous years yes. of the expo. That's what we kept hearing. But it still was not great. It was not, for me, it was not the level of Disney 
uh, fit and polish mm-hmm. of crowd control that I expected. Um, but because I think what it what that equates to is the fact that it wasn't a lot of Disney employees. It was a lot of like hired and help because they needed so many yeah, people to and, run it. And people from the convention center, I assume. Yeah. And they're not Disney cast members. Yeah. So uh, I don't think you're going to get well, that same level. You know, and the thing too that we have to remember is just the layout of Disneyland is mm-hmm. set up so that it kind of helps with crowd control That's true. just on its own. Whereas we were just in this big huge space and unfortunately they didn't have actual like you know when you go into an attraction queue they've got the little chain thing oh yeah little, you know the little roped off areas they, had well, tape. they couldn't have that it was tape on the floor so yeah. it was very hard to enforce the tape on the roll rule because people would just choose to ignore it right. and some people just thought well if i just push my way hard enough then i'll get in so it was it was a kind of a combination of two. I did we did make sure that we thanked all of the people there oh, yes. that we saw the Disney cast members as well as just the um, people just all we the called them in the people in the teal shirts. Yes, um, th- that were I believe non Disney employees. We just made sure that we thanked them all because honestly, they have a hard job. That would have been so difficult to try and control that many people mm-hmm. that are all excited and wanting to get to the same one little area. Mm-hmm. So they I did their they best. Did, I think they did a good job considering what it was they were having to deal with. It right. could have been much, much, much worse. Now, uh, so the second day, uh, we went to the 50th, aniver- or 50th anniversary Haunted Mansion panel, and that was pretty cool. Uh, what did we think about that? Just walking into that room gave me chills. They had The lights were dim. We sh- shared a picture on social media. They had, like... This really cool backstage lighting behind the stage. They actually had black light spotlights or purple looking spotlights. Yep. Very, very cool. Um, I think the highlight for me was actually one of the more understated things of the presentation. Um, the first person that they invited out on stage, um, I feel bad. I don't remember what his name was. He's an Imagineer. He's mm. also an Illusioneer. And so he showed us all sorts of different techniques that they use to kind of create these illusions in the attraction. He was the guy who brought back the hatbox ghost. That was the biggest thing to me. And they very they just kind of breezed over that, but he was a big part of bringing back the hatbox ghost to Disneyland. So I thought that was just really incredible to be, you know, to just watch him kind of do his thing and he was so he was so giddy and so excited. Oh, yeah. like a, he was like a little kid again showing us all these it, illusions. It things. reminded me of like when I was in like middle and high school and our science and teachers would show us like Bill Nye. He had yes. that like level of yes. excitement about these cool nerdy uh, things because a lot of it's mm-hmm. it's science based, right? Like so oh, definitely. it was with lasers and smoke and, Even and mirrors. Even some, some I think it was tied laundry detergent. Of course they had the the branding covered up, but yeah, I right. didn't know that. Did it you glows know laundry? In the dark. Yeah, laundry detergent glows in the dark. So. Yeah, so it was pretty, that was pretty awesome. Um, they ended up having the granddaughter of X and TCO, who uh, was uh, instrumental in things like the Haunted Mansion, and so uh, she came out and they yeah, did. Yeah, X they, was. Yeah, X and TCO was, mm-hmm. uh, and his uh, granddaughter came out and uh, yeah. read. They did a. They had a version of the script that mm-hmm. was like about a few months before the ride or mm-hmm. the attraction opened. Mm-hmm. And uh, so they did a read through of that. So um, so they had Sally Slater, who is the um, girl in the stretching room with the uh, umbrella over the crocodile. Mm-hmm. And then there was also she a was, Muppet. She was kind of like she acted. Sally acted as the narrator of yeah. the story. Um, the granddaughter w- actually read the part of Madame Leota. And then there was a Muppet there that did kind of the ghost host role. And the Muppet, I think, was the one of the highlights for me. Oh he was gosh. completely amazing. Uh, Teresa liked the fact that they came out, the two cast members that, uh, or the two performers that were the Muppet came rolling out on this like little cart they with wheels. reminded me, so you guys remember when you were like in grade schools when I did this, um, and you, oh, his, the Muppet's name was Uncle Deadly. Okay. Was our, our ghost host sure. for that reading. But anyways, they had, um, they reminded me of those little like wheeled things that you played on in gym class. It was just a little board. Oh, yeah. and had these tiny little wheels and you'd like scoot around on them and they were like a couple inches off the ground. Um, but yeah, so I, I found it very entertaining that they were all, of course all dressed in black and they scooted out there and it was two people that were mm-hmm. happy that were controlling this Muppet. He was hilarious. He was mm-hmm. the highlight of that little reading. Yeah, it was great. Well, Muppets are always entertaining. So that yeah, was really he, he, awesome. He even included some sound effects for different oh. things, too. So yeah. And the audience great. got involved with the sound great. effects. Yep, it was great. And then, um, so we did that. And then you and Vern actually were able to go to the next panel because uh, I left for a little while. Yes, Vern and I went and attended the Immersive Worlds panel. 
Holy cow, was that interesting. We got to hear um, Joe Rohde was actually the one that kind of was the moderator for that panel. So that was exciting in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Um, But then we got to hear from Imagineers that created different worlds and different lands. So um, there is... Scott, he was the one that was in charge of Galaxy's Edge and right. Riverside. Scott Trail Bridge, yep. Both Galaxy's Edge, both locations of Galaxy's Edge. Um, we also had Jeanette. She was over, she oversaw Alani. Oh. So that was really, you know, it wasn't a park thing, but it was very different. Oh, monorail. Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting, le- learning about the, you know, how to make, how they created Alani and how the, all the preparation and every, the, the back work of Alani that nobody probably really has ever heard about yeah. before. And then last but not least, we had Luke, who actually worked on some of our parks that are overseas. Uh, one of the big, one, big ones was Adventure Isle and that portion of the park. So very, very interesting. Um, they all had diff- It was a very great panel because they all had different hurdles that they had to overcome. And so they talked in depth about how they, you know, what, what they did to prepare, kind of some of the hidden things in their world that make it immersive and you know basically how you create an immersive world Mm -hmm. um they even talked about things like you know what you have to define what your envelope of immersion is going to be so one of the things that i thought was funny was they were talking about galaxy's edge and um scott was saying that they had a lot of imagineers that had really great and really fun and really true to to galaxy's edge bathroom ideas but he decided you know i think that's too. I think the envelope's too far for that. Perhaps we, you know, that's one thing that you just you just need to know how to use that. We don't want that to be confusing for our guests. So I thought I thought that was funny and that was clever. So it's been a little while now, and we've moved from outside the turnstiles. We are now sitting waiting for the Main Street Electrical Parade on Main Street. We're right outside of the Coca Cola Refreshment Corner and, and looking the at the photo supply. Uh, we got all sorts of stuff going on. Lots of hustle and bustle. We've got. The castle was just lit up. It looks beautiful. We've got balloons all around us. So, so awesome. But we're going to talk about what we did yesterday um, during the D23 Expo the last day on Sunday. Yes. So on Sunday, our big thing in the morning was the Walt Disney Parks panel. Parks, resorts, and I can't remember, retail, I think, or Mm -hmm. something. Uh, And uh, we had high hopes hopes going into that one. Uh, We had heard rumors in the morning that it was going to be a big Tomorrowland remodel. And I think a lot of people were really, I know I was one of them, really hoping Well, even cast members in the park uh, have said that today. Today today they've been saying that too. But what we learned, uh, for we'll talk about Disneyland stuff first. Yes. Uh, The big announcement I felt for Disneyland was that Marvel Land or... Avengers Campus. The Avengers Campus. I was like, I can't remember what it is now. Um, the Avengers Campus, we did get to see the ride vehicles for Spider-Man. We got more of a story behind the attraction for Spider-Man. Yes. Um, which, was, it sounds interesting. Um, I, I, I'm still not certain how I feel about it, but I'll wait until I experience it. But the big news out of that was that we're getting a second attraction, an e-ticket type attraction that will be coming to Marvel Land. That's the Quinjet. Yep, it's going to be, yeah, it has to do with flying with the Quinjet. They did not give us much more information than that. Yeah, so they said they weren't exciting. quite ready to announce any further details. It will come in phase two. They did not have any details on when phase two would be. Mm-hmm. So, but something is coming down, sure. the, down the road. Yes. So th- I thought that was pretty exciting because I thought we were just going to have Guardians of the Galaxy, which we have mm-hmm. already, and then the Spider-Man attraction. They released some concept art for the uh, El Capitoon Theater. Yes, that's yes. going to have the Mickey. That's going to be the new facade for Mickey and Minnie's Runway Railway coming yep, to Toontown. And we Town. kind of got more of a story for that too. So mm-hmm. Mickey and Minnie are hosting a premiere for their movie, and then suddenly you kind of get taken into the film with them on this wacky adventure. Of course, Goofy is your driver, so who knows what is going to happen? Right. And we talked to one of the Imagineers that worked on the actual attraction. It's going to be trackless, and uh, depending on which car you're in, you will get a different experience mm-hmm. of the attraction. So yeah. it'll be repeatable. Which will be nice. Yeah, we did take photos. I will post the photos of those attraction vehicles for you guys as well. Yeah. Very, very cool. So then, uh, appropriately, we are on Main Street. And one of the other announcements they had was a new parade coming to Disneyland. The new parade will premiere in the spring. And this one is called Magic Happens. And it's gonna. The parade floats look pretty cool. It it's looks, got some cocoa, which looks, people were very excited yes, about. Yes, very excited about. There was a very loud roar from the crowd with that. It's of course a princess float. 
Um, they didn't, there was a Moana theme float. Yes. That was the other one that they showed us, too. So just concept art, not actual photos of these uh, floats yet. Um, but they did have a special guest appearance by Jordan Fisher. Who did the song yep, for the new performed parade. performed the song. And I, you know, I enjoyed the song tag. I think felt a little iffy about it. Well, it didn't, to me... It didn't feel like a parade song, but I will say Paint the Night also did not feel like a parade song, yes. but it was a great song but for the they, parade. Yeah, but it, it works. Now, um, my hesitation is magic happens. The magic looks like the same kind of thing like light magic was going to be after their electrical parade. So I'm going to hold judgment, but I'm iffy using the word magic for some reason. <laughs> but um, it does look like a very beautiful, uh, very colorful, very beautiful new parade that yeah. is coming to the Disneyland. Well, and Coco is going to be in it, and I know lots yes, of people are excited so, about I that. Am, I personally am very excited mm-hmm. about Coco. So, And then a lot of the other announcements, unfortunately, did not have to do with Disneyland. A lot of it had to do with um, Disney World, specifically Epcot. Basically, it sounded yeah. like... 75% of that park is actually going to be changing. Yes. So it's a huge It does look very cool, some of the project. ideas they it have does coming. Look very, very cool. Um, they the also other- announced some uh, the new castle, some more information about yep. the castle for yep. Hong Kong Disneyland. Mm-hmm. They announced, uh, or they, they talked a little bit about the um, expansion coming to Disneyland Paris and also the expansion coming to Tokyo Disneyland. Yes. And then the other thing we learned too was that um, Target is partnering, or Disney is partnering with Target and a lot of the Shop Disney merchandise that is the Disney branded merchandise that you get either online at shopdisney.com or that you get in the parks, you know, that the park quality merchandise will be coming to Target stores. Yeah, they'll have Target like a little mini now. Disney store yeah. inside Target. I thought that was an interesting concept. We did get to meet Bull, well, we didn't get to meet, we did get to see, see Bullseye. Bullseye, which is very exciting. The other thing that we have to brag about is when they were talking about Epcot, what they were doing with Epcot, they announced that a new Mary Poppins themed attraction will be making its way to the World Pavilion, of course, over in the, United, in the Kingdom. United Kingdom Square, and it is going to be themed to Mary Poppins. Well, the person that got to help deliver that message was Dick Van Dyke, and we just, we fangirled and fanboyed out so hard. He was the, so, of the panels and stuff so we went to, cool. he was the only standing ovation, and it lasted and for a long time. And the longest time. standing ovation. It was just uh, incredible. I like the fact person. that Bob Chapek said... Uh, thank you for being here. After all the cheering, he said, thank you for being here. Mm-hmm. And Dick Van Dyke said, I wouldn't be anywhere else. Yes. Be- and I think it was because of that reaction. Yes. Like, imagine. And he looked truly touched by it, yes. too. It didn't look like he was expecting it. He no. was so humble and grateful looking for it. It was very, yeah. it was incredible. Yeah. And it's so cool to be in the room with such a legend. Yeah. Um, so, actually, I'm excited about the Mary Poppins attraction. Me, too. And uh, so that was kind of it for the parks panel. And then in the afternoon... Oh, the other thing we learned um, that I wanted to talk about, because it's a new app that is going to Disney World. Um, It's going to be called the genie basically genie yes um and so it's it sounds very interesting um but basically you can use this app to help you kind of plan your day so you can use it to help with your dining reservations even help with which attractions you want to hit up when they have pre-done um lists for you or they can kind of cu- help customize it for you well we and then talk- if your plans change then the app will kind of reroute for yeah. you too so the two things that i took away from that that were super cool so anybody we've talked about them before touring plans. Yes. It sounds like this is a Disney version of that kind mm-hmm. of a system, but what it does is over time, because of your Disney.com account, it learns what your likes and dislikes are and crafts kind of an ex- a day experience yeah. for you, which is kind of cool. It'll be interesting to see how it, how it comes out. I hope it comes to Disneyland at some point. So in the afternoon, what did we do? Um, so then that afternoon, we spent a lot of time just kind of Getting our last glimpses of the show floor. Yes. Uh, we went and so checked much. out the Gold Member Lounge, which, holy cow, if you're a Gold Member and you go to the D23 Expo, they get, like, we were just showered with all sorts of gifts in the Gold mm-hmm. Member Lounge. I was not expecting I went in there because I saw that they had press pennies, and that was the only place you could get a press penny of the D23 Expo. So that's why I was very excited when right. in line. But we got, like, three or four gifts while we were in there. It was like, just very unexpected. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, because you scanned your badge and they did kind of like a wheel thing. Yeah, like and a depending on drawing. what it landed on. So, uh, producer Vern got Mickey ears. Yeah, he got an original Mouseketeer set of Mickey ears. And so you like got the ones you get in the park that are $25. Yes, and you got. I got a. So it looks like the pin set, the D23 pin set. I got a pin that is D23. It says D23 Gold member on it. Same style, with, but it has Mickey on it. 
So I got one of the um, Coke bottles that they sell in Galaxy's Edge. Yeah. It looks like a thermal detonator. Cool. And then we had two other people with us. We had Casper got a towel, a D23 Expo towel. Really nice. Very nice. Very soft for yes. a towel. And then Laura got um, D23 flip-flops. Those were also very cool. Yeah, so I thought, it, it, I was surprised by that too, because Tag mm -hmm. and I are the D23 Gold members, but they let our guests spin the wheel yeah. and get prizes too. So that Super was cool. very unexpected, very cool. And then in the afternoon? In the afternoon, this was honestly one of the highlights for me. Um, we went to the Storytellers panel, which we got to see Tony Baxter talk oh, about yes. how he crafted and how he created the stories that we know and love in the park. Along with Tony, though, we got to see Don Hahn talk about... He he's a he does a lot with the movies. Yes. Um, so we got to see him talk about how he crafts stories in movies. Also with movies, Paul Briggs. Yes. Um, he is actually... He just announced a couple of big movies. He's the story director for... Um, he did. He helped with Frozen, but he also is doing a couple of the big movies Something that they the just dragon. announced. Um, and then also, we had... Floyd Newman was Floyd also Newman. part of this. And he is an animator that worked with Walt. Yeah. And worked on things like, I mean, he worked on the Jungle Book. He animated for the Jungle Book. Yep. How freaking cool is that? One of the coolest <laughs> things very, very we cool. learned from that was they talked a lot in the beginning about storyboards. Yeah. And how a lot of times, uh, well, they said it was funny because Walt would come in and look at storyboards and he would just tear parts of it mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. and make them redo it. And so they had said that there was, uh, they talked about how there were some pieces of like the Jungle Book that uh, they j it just didn't fit. So they right. had to throw it out. So one of the questions, oh, and John Stamos emceed with his wife. Yes. And they're big Disney fans. They own the original part of the original Disneyland sign from uh, the 80s that was here mm -hmm. before California Adventure got uh, constructed. And so it was really interesting. Uh, he asked basically, uh, is there something that they've ever animated or done or come up with a story, because it's storytelling, yeah. that they had to get rid of? And they did. Everybody did. And he said it always happens. And said, as an animator, you just expect that. Well, that and what did he say? He, he threw out a number, and it was something like 90% of what you do gets thrown out. Yes. As a storyteller, as an animator. And they all agreed. Tony Baxter said the same thing of Imagineering. And then you have to do the, all that. The current Disney animators said the same thing as well, which, I mean, the stories evolve and they change. Yeah. In fact, um, we learned that one of the original concepts for Frozen was actually that it was going to be a love triangle between the two girls and Kristoff. And then they became the sisters and then later. And then it transformed into being a story about sisters instead. So yeah. I don't know if... I'm hoping the love triangle thing, they also still weren't sisters. We I don't know yeah. about that. But, so it was just interesting because I can't imagine that movie... Being, being a love tri yeah. triangle. But well, it's it an animated film. It'd be kind of weird to do that, but... Oh, yep. The other thing... Uh, so Tony Baxter talked about what he... Tr he liked to design attractions... Not that we're going to be amazing on your first experience, but ones that were... He built... How do you... He said, he said it was like, like 20, on your 20th, 20th experience. Ride, yeah, he, he created 20th ride attractions. So he wanted to put in all sorts of things. Yes, of course, that were iconic that you would recognize and, and love. But then also things that you just kept... He, he very much focused on making his attractions repeatable, which yeah. is very obvious because he is responsible for attractions that we know and love. So just today, we went on three of his attractions, like right right away in the morning. Yep. First thing we did was Indiana Jones. Yep. And then after that, we did Splash Mountain and yep. then Big Thunder Mountain. So those are just such iconic, wonderful attractions. And so it was really interesting just kind of listening about his thought process with it. And the, the cool thing, too, is he's also very humble and very just... Yeah, he realizes that, that uh, it's a team yeah, effort. All of them said yeah. it's a team effort, that they were... That the few of them that were up on stage were representing a team that brought yes. all of these things together. Yes. So even though people know Tony Baxter, people know Joe Rohde, people know these Imagineers and animators, mm -hmm. they're all a team. They all work together. Well, There's plenty the, of yeah, people we don't know. It, we saw Joe Rohde speak at a couple of panels. This, well, I saw him speak at a couple of panels. You saw him at the one. Yeah. He was at part of the Parks panel. Yes. Oh, that was the other big thing that we forgot about with the Parks panel. They announced a new cruise ship. Yes. And they also announced that Disney purchased a, a piece new island of a new island that Joe Brody will be designing the resort area yeah. for. That was the other big thing. Yep. Um, but, you know, they just seem... With how incredible, how much they've given to s millions and millions of people, they are just still so humble and so down to earth about it. They aren't like, oh yeah, I'm whoever, I created this attraction that everyone loves and you should know who I am. Yeah. No, they're still very, it seemed like they were very touched that they got 
all the applause that they got and that people were there to hear them talk well, and yeah. all that. It's very, very I cool. mean, he was very humble. So we we happened to see Tony Baxter. You guys, at, we ran into him yeah. at the expo. How, how cool. So when I approached him, well, first of all, I think it's a funny story. So I approached him, and he was looking at his phone. And I wanted to get his attention. And the first thing you say with anybody is you say their first name. So I said, Tony. And then I felt stupid because I felt like maybe I should have said Mr. Baxter <laughs> or something. And then he looked at me and I said, can I get a picture? And he said, yes. And then um, he didn't really say anything. I think he was losing his voice because at the panel later, he was losing his voice. But, um, but I said, uh, they took a picture of me and Teresa and him. And I said, you know, I want to thank you for creating these iconic experiences uh, that we that I've enjoyed and a lot of people have enjoyed. Thank you. And then I said to him, because he didn't say anything, again, I didn't know he was losing his voice. Uh, I, he kind of sat there in silence for a second, and I kind of felt dumb, so I said, I'm sure you hear that all the time. And he kind of mustered up, uh, but it's still nice to hear it. Yeah. Well, and it was a very genuine. Yes. A very genuine. Yes, I do. But he was very sweet. very nice to hear it. So, you know, it's, it's just cool. Because he could have just been like, yeah, yeah, you know. Well, he's a big Disney cool. fan, too. Very cool. And he's still, it seems like he's still very involved with yeah. this as well. Just how he was talking mm -hmm. during the storytelling panel. It looks like he does, He does. It sounds like he still gets involved, or he's at least still very interested and keeps up with what's, yes. what's coming and what's going on. So now, today, we're at Disneyland. It's Monday. Yes. And we're sitting, waiting for the Main Street Electrical Parade. Um, the Main, Street, Main Street lights have now all come on. One thing it's that beautiful. I, one thing that I would like to add to the to the show here real quick is we have uh, an exchange student here from Poland. We do his uh, first day, uh, very at first Disneyland. time at Disneyland. So um, Indiana Jones, we wrote Indiana Jones. Uh, what did you think? Uh, was pretty awesome and pretty cool. I I really uh, like it. What did you say when you first got off? Uh, Amazing. Yeah. yeah. He's tired. <laughs> but um, uh, what do you think of Disneyland? It's pretty awesome and everyone have to go there. Yeah. Yeah. So we had a lot of fun. Um, the other thing that I want to point out to, to people is we did meet a lot of you guys here. We did. We had oh, a meetup on so, Saturday. so much fun. Thank you to everybody that was able to come yes. out to the meetup. It was so nice to it put was, faces to names yeah, and it, it see you guys. It was crowded, and I, I felt bad. I'm like, oh, gosh, maybe we didn't choose the right place to do this. But because all the D23 yeah, Expo people went there. I think there. any place that we would have chosen would have probably been the yeah. same. Um, but, yeah, it was just so amazing. So thank you guys so much. That yeah. meant a lot to Tag and I, that you guys took time out of your day. Yes. One of our listeners actually came out of the parks to come see us, which the more I thought about that, the more I was like, wow, I don't know if I would be able to. I mean, you're in the park. How yes. hard, you know how hard it is to leave the park. Yes. So he came out of, they came out of the park to come say hi and to meet us, which is just incredible. Yeah. And we've had, uh, we've met listeners in the park uh, the first day when we got on the plane. We had some listeners with us for a little bit. And then today we have been around with some listeners too. Yeah. So if you see us in the park, we'll still be here this week until Friday. Mm -hmm. Come uh, see us. We have buttons that we can give out to you. We always want to see you guys. We can take a picture. You can of hang course. out with us yeah, to an attraction course. or two. Um, uh, We're we here just to have to fun just like you guys are. So yeah, definitely. The more the merrier when it comes to fun, right? Yeah. And hopefully you guys enjoyed all of our uh, Patreon posts and Instagram posts. Yeah, I do want to kind of apologize because we were getting a little, like, just overwhelmed and, like, with in everything. the Disney moment. And so we may, I, I don't feel like we posted as much as we could have. So yes. I, I do want to apologize. But you guys, it was so much fun. We knew we'd be talking to you guys about it during yeah. this week's episode, too. Plus... Much, much more to come since we're here for four more days. So we'll be talking about this trip next week, too, I'm sure. Well, uh, we want to send a shout out to James and Concierge, the team at Concierge, because uh, our trip would not have been possible without them. They got us a great hotel room over at the Howard Johnson, which is amazing. Eight minutes away. You guys, the room is amazing. It is, yes, yeah, so close. It's walking distance. The other beautiful thing is um, the room that we are in, we actually requested they have park view rooms over yes. there. And the park view rooms that we are in, in Building 1, have actually been newly renovated. They're gorgeous. The firework You can see the fireworks show from them. It's, of course, not as good as if you were in no. the park. But it's, it's, still it's amazing. so amazing. And the really interesting thing to me was the perception when you're in the park of where how close the fireworks are going off from the 
um, castle castle versus in, where it is in real. It's it's much further away yes. than I would have thought. Even much further back than Tomorrowland seems to be. So, anyways, but it was very cool. They filled up the entire sky right there. Yeah, we can see the Matterhorn. We have two rooms: the Matterhorn from one of our rooms. The other room you can't see the Matterhorn. But you can see um, you can see a lot of actually Pixar the here. You can see the Incredicoaster. You can see the Pixar Pal around. Very very cool. Of course, we can see you Space can see Mountain. Mission Breakout. Oh, it's very cool. Very very cool. Yeah, and then also um, with the concierge, if you guys want uh, to have the same experience like we had, please 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 go to concierge.com and they will yes. help you out. They do not cost anything extra, and they will get everything taken care of. We actually the next three days we have dining packages because yeah, of them that we didn't have to do anything for. We just had to say we would like these dining packages. And they made it happen. Yes, yeah, so that's going to be amazing. And so, um, as always, uh, well, for this week, we're very thankful to everybody who has uh, become supporters this week because we have yeah, quite a list. we have a lot of new supporters. I don't have the list in front of me right now, but, uh, but all of you guys are amazing. Thank you very much. We're almost at 100, which would be... Spectacular! Oh, that would, if we be, could that would just be like the cherry on top of this trip. Yes, if we made a hundred, made a hundred supporters. Yes, that would be totally awesome. And I also want to say, when we're talking about our supporters, that the supporters we've met in the park have gone above and beyond for us. Oh yes, that uh, way more than we ever expected anybody. Yeah. So thank you guys so so much for making this trip that was already magical even more magical. We we wouldn't be able to do the show without you guys. Yeah. We'll be back next week with more Disneyland news and information. So until then, come out and enjoy the park with us. Yes. We hope you've enjoyed your visit to the Magic Kingdom and that you'll be back with us again soon.